for the live coding session. Code Buddies is a global community of amazing people who help each other become better at software development through conversations on Slack and peer-to-peer -peer organized study groups and virtual hangouts. Today, we'll be continuing working on the project for Western Friend. Western Friend is the official publication of Quakers in Pacific, North Pacific, and Intermountain yearly meetings. We have been working on porting the Western Friend website over from Drupal to Wagtail. Uh, we spent about five years developing this site with Drupal. It's taken us quite a ways. It's very good um, content management system, certainly. We realized we would probably need a little bit more control and the ability to um, kind of peek underneath the hood of how things are running internally. Uh, and it kind of boiled down to a decision between Python or PHP, and particularly um, sort of the ecosystem uh, surrounding projects. And fortunately, um, or so to speak, this Wagtail project has emerged recently. Uh, it's a very WordPress-like content management system for Django, and it essentially brings a really rich editing experience to the Django platform. And Django is renowned for being a very stable and versatile web development framework uh, for Python. So today, we're continuing working on this um, subscription feature for the Western Friend uh, Wagtail website, which will replace the Drupal website. Uh, the goal is so that people can subscribe online and pay their subscription fee. And once they've activated a subscription, they can view magazine content from the most recent issues. The latest three issues of the magazine are subscriber only, meaning um, you only get limited access if you're not a subscriber. So you'll see uh, featured articles you can read in their full form, but any of the sort of regular articles, you only get a teaser, a little truncated uh, snippet of the article. We're not following this um, approach exactly in the Wagtail version of the website, uh, as you'll see shortly. So let's go ahead and close a couple of tabs. Today we're going to start um, a multi-process, uh, multi-step process for subscribing to the platform, to the Western Friend website. So let's go ahead and enter our environment and run the server. I have to copy and paste this. It doesn't open in the correct browser otherwise. So you can see um, the basic form of the Western Friend website here. I've gotten uh, a little bit of, I've got a little bit of content set up here. Essentially what it is, is for every magazine article you have a title, a teaser text, and a body. Now for subscribed users, they'll see the article body, meaning users with active subscription that's been paid for. There's a little bit of a display bug here. These are overlapping. I'll have to, I keep forgetting to open a, a bug report about that. Now, so the, uh, a couple of steps, looking a couple of steps forward, what we're trying to achieve here is um, a better way to link subscriptions to the actual using user account. Uh, in order to do that, we'll have to make a couple of refinements and uh, it, not only um, for future subscriptions, but previous subscriptions, uh, subscriptions or even future subscriptions that are uh, created through a paper form or have been created in the past through a paper form or in the Drupal website. We realized that there's, those are common. Um, what those have in common is that they were not uh, created through the Wagtail platform. So we'll have to import them either manually or through a bulk operation. 
So currently, if I inspect it, let's see here. No, it's not going to show me the details, but if I edit it, uh, we have a subscriber email here. And the way I initially implemented the subscription, uh, which is not going to be the way going forward, was just a query that looks up for any given user who is logged in currently, if there's a subscription matching the email address. Uh, that would, it works and um, got me, uh, you know, something tangible to get feedback on. But Mary and I discussed it and we would rather um, in sure that regardless of the user email, if they change their email for whatever reason, uh, we're going to be able to link back uh, the user to their subscription. As you can see here, users have an email. But internally, we have a user ID. Just go ahead and change that up. Doesn't matter. This looks a little better. And the username, etc. So today we'll be making a foreign key relationship between users and subscriptions. I believe we'll get to that during this live stream. Yes. We also realize we want to create a custom user model. We want to add one field uh, to the user model and maybe others, but um, as I mentioned earlier, those offline subscribers who have been collected um, by Mary over the years, each of them has a unique identifier that Mary has assigned as a, just a numeric subscriber number that is not going to correspond with the internal user ID of Django and Wagtail. So Mary would like to add that to the user model. Um, Wagtail and Django make that easy. Um, I'm not going to start out with that because I've already got a little bit of data here and a user created, uh, but we need to do that sooner than later. So let's go ahead and uh, start with this idea that only logged in users can subscribe. Ensure that users have an account before subscribing and that they're logged in. Create a foreign key relationship between a user account and a subscription rather than linking by email. So we're just going to make our uh, data model a little bit more tightly integrated. Okay, so I haven't really planned out how to do this. I should have probably planned it out a little bit in advance. Let me close out some things. So we don't have to deal with payments today. We are not uh, dealing with articles yet today. This is the magazine article. So again, we're not dealing with articles. This is the subscription index page. Where we showed the subscribe form. I think this will be the place. Essentially, <laughs> we need to make sure that users are logged in before they can submit this form. So on the subscription index page, let's take a look at this. We have this intro text, introductory text here that can be edited through the Wagtail UI. You can change the title and the text. And then a form that renders. However, this form should not render. Uh, unless the user is logged in. I'm just thinking whether what the user flow should be, to be honest. Uh, Mary suggested that possibly we could collect uh, user account information at the same time as uh, having them fill out the subscription form. That would work, like a username, uh, email, and password. But some people might have already registered. And at the end of our conversation, what we sort of um, agreed to was having the subscription be a multi-step process. If you're not logged in to have you log in or register, then subscribe, then pay. So I believe I can check when rendering this, uh, when serving this, this page. 
I can redirect them to the login form with a message. And upon successfully registering or logging in, they will be redirected to the subscribe page. It's a little bit, uh, seems like some, it could get mixed up in the process. Let me just take, take a look at this. So, let's see if there's a quick recipe. Redirect all not authenticated users after login, redirect user to a custom page. How do redirect? I think there's a, a URL argument that you can pass to the login. Ooh, here we go, login required. Let me just double check, because this is not te technically a, a Django view, it, uh, it is a method on the wagtail page uh, class, essentially inheriting. So wagtail, they might have, I don't want to necessarily be a private page. See if there's just a way to redirect when signing in. No, that's actually probably not what I wanted. No. This is a guess. I don't remember if this was from Wagtail or what. Let me just see if I go to um, login. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> next. So there's a URL argument here, next equals subscribe. And so what I can do is construct this. Let me see one more thing if I say register. Next equals subscribe. This should also work. Just do a generic account and then register. Oh, <laughs> right. that won't work won't can't use that URL to uh, redirect to the subscription page well, that's the that's just part of the process of live coding hitting these limitations I might just be able to have this. Page be more dynamic, so. Let me double check here. The subscription index page can actually render the registration form.
reason I'm not using a, a regular Django view again is so that you know, I'm using the serve method instead of a Django view is so I can allow the editor to add some information to the subscription page. So I don't want to lose that. I'd have to research this and find a way forward. Let's see if we can test if the user is logged in. So we have request user. I, th I think I can pass in some context that lets us, I mean, this should already be there actually, request user is authenticated. Yeah, right here. So this is already in the template context, good. Mm, I can display a message, so that's a simple approach and Mary's been very forgiving with, so to speak, with uh, how sort of simplistic our <laughs> approaches need to be to some of these problems. So let's start here. When we're rendering the subscription, somewhere below the <coughs> page title, let's put a little text here. Uh, I don't know if this is Django. In general, the uh, Django templating language, if not, if is not true, if users, are doing it. okay, that's a good way. This will at least get us down the road. And I'm wondering if 
I should actually just hide this entire form. Hey, what's up, Quantum? I just saw your chat here. Are we Sunday yet? My head really hurts, but I saw you online, so I thought I'd say hi. Yeah, not quite Sunday yet. Uh, I was going to broadcast both days this weekend. Um, today I'm working on the Western Friend website, and then tomorrow we can work on this uh, music app. I think I have a, actually a clever name for it uh, that's going to be a more general, uh, generic in scope. Because uh, we it's called Tonnets right now, but that's limiting us to only one... Uh, geometric representation of the music. So uh, I think there's a lot of other ways to kind of project music into, uh, you know, 2.5 dimensions or whatever. Let's see, okay, so yeah. How do I do this? So I think you just, how do I do this? I'm having some troubles recalling how Django templating works. I don't know if I have to put this in a block or anything like that, if I can just include this directly. How come your head hurts, Quantum? You're not getting enough uh, water? Okay, so let's go ahead and close down what I'm not using here. Just keep things simple. says no idea probably a little dehydrated yeah yeah it's easy to do i've been sick since wednesday so that might play into it oh man i hope you've been able to get some rest and take your take it easy okay so we here we just include data data and then it can be any uh html yeah that makes sense just didn't quite remember it so and it is i believe going to be relative to the project root so let's see the template the global template path so we'll grab just do those get them out of the way uh, so our app is subscription templates are doing it that part just subscription I think should work because it's already templates is sort of I don't know modifies right but it grabs those all together <laughs> Yeah, I'm a little bit sick too, I guess, not really, but just sniffly. I get the sniffles going on. So what are we looking at, subscription form? And I'm gonna go ahead and rename it. Subscription, subscription form. Rename, rename. Yeah. and. I'll just note that sometimes, yeah, this is so PHP. -y. <laughs> well, I think template inheritance, template um, composition is really useful. So yeah, if uh, these te if these languages enable it, I think it helps your code stay cleaner and easier to read. Uh, and I gotta just also acknowledge that sort of the requirements here are shifting a little bit away from what Mary and I had agreed to, but uh, fortunately she's really uh, patient with that because what we agree to and what we kind of think of in the time where we're discussing and, brain discussing and brainstorming uh, ideas doesn't always really, uh, isn't always what's possible or straightforward when I actually start into the code. So if you have an opportunity to work with somebody who's flexible like that, um, it's really just reassuring, I guess. I've had other experiences where people got really fixated on deliveries and exactly how they wanted it to be and just didn't really have tolerance for uncertainty. All right, so let's just see. I am authenticated right now, so I, this should essentially still render the subscription form if I've got everything in, lined up. Templating languages in general, Quantum says, yeah. What kind of templating languages have you worked with? What do they have in PHP? 
Twig is a is that they use Twig much in PHP projects or is that like Pythonic? All right, so I am logged in, registered, uh, and logged in. Yep, there we go. So if I go to the subscribe page, boom, rich text. Okay, so yeah, I just have to, in essence, uh, bring my. So actually, that that shows me that the template inclusion worked. It's reaching over there and, and trying to render this template, but then it didn't have this rich text, um, what do they call them, filter. And similarly, this crispy field filter is missing. So let's load those in. Boom, it works. Now if I log out, uh, subscribe now is blank. Yes. So I'll say, hmm, please log in or register to, excuse me. Please log in or register to blah, 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 blah. Now the login link, I can redirect back to this subscribe now, but the register I can't unless I create a custom registration page on success redirecting the user. Oh, that might work. Quantum says, I've used t uh, Twig, Nunjux, and another one whose name I can't remember. Oh, hey, Quantum, by the way, um, I set up an Odoo uh, trial version uh, today and yesterday I actually ordered it yesterday and then it was configured today. It's pretty cool. I'm wanting to use it for uh, building uh, a customer base for this this uh, this other project I've been working on for a while and we started a co-op around called Jerry Life. I haven't done coding on Jerry Life for a while but uh, we're trying to uh, make it sustainable in 2020. That's our goal. So might use Odoo for the for the drag and drop website builder, but probably not right away. We're using WordPress and it's doing well. It's doing us good. All right, so on the index page, let's just put some text here just so we have something. All right, I should be upvoting these because it gives people their little updoots. Bootstrap text. called uh, highlight something mm, what are those things called I don't think it's here you know all this colorful text you can put in bootstrap I think it's under oh here they are Let's do, actually I want the buttons to be, uh, I don't know what I'm trying to do here. Probably a card with buttons, login or register buttons. Here's, can you have multiple card link, another link? Yeah, if you just put buttons in there, right? In the card body, let's just paste this in there. Uh, to make this clear, I will create another template. I almost typed PHP there, login.php. <laughs> Not writing PHP. Uh, let's see. Um, Quantum says, if you have any question, feel free to hit me up. I'm not going to read your uh, email on the stream, but cool. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's really cool. I checked out the CRM part of Odoo. And yeah, I've been using Blaze. And this Jerry Life project uh, uses Meteor, uh, uses the Blaze templating language. Pretty nice. Uh, it's almost just HTML. I like working close to HTML. All right, so basically we just need a little bit of attention to detail here. All right, so we got a card. I don't need a card. 
This has two card bodies. That's strange. Uh, how do they do these the nice buttons? Just regular buttons. Yeah, I think I would prefer the buttons for the calls to action. Let's see though. Uh, subscription login. Actually, just do this real quick. Copy and paste as much as I can, but at least make sure I have an understanding of what I'm pasting. All right. Quantum says. I think that's why it feels PHP because PHP was initially just meant to extend HTML a little bit. Then it got out of hand. <laughs> hey, there's nothing wrong with Bootstrap. Why are you? What are you doing that face for? <laughs> it's just I want something to get us down the road. I don't want to fixate on <laughs> on stuff. That mentality, quantum, is what causes so much churn and waste that everything old is just antiquated and needs to be thrown out. It's a very JavaScripty mentality. I noticed that uh, it causes a lot of reinvention, right? A lot of spinning the wheels, reinventing the wheel. Um, and I noticed after having been working at my day job with AWS, everything, uh, the AWS Lambda in particular and JavaScript specifically. Uh, so coming out of this JavaScript mentality of reinvention and innovation at great expense, and the AWS conference, the annual conference, is called AWS reInvent. So it's like, yeah, we, we know it. We like reinventing the wheel. Not invented here syndrome is the opposite of reinvent everything, isn't it? So you got to kind of have a balance, I suppose, don't we? Where is, and I like uh, not invented here as much as possible, though, particularly when things have been around for a while, Bootstrap and Django. That's why I'm using Django. Python has a really good ecosystem. Stuff like that, that takes you a long way. Will this work? Are you ready for the, for the moment of truth, truthiness, and LCness? So now, there we go. Ooh, login or register. No, that's not what not invented here is. It's a mentality of doing everything from scratch. It's hubris. Oh, not invented here. I thought meant to re, uh, to build, uh, to reuse other things and not invent those things, but build on other, build other things into your, your solution. I think I think that's what that means. Let's double check. It's the exact opposite. Not invented here. Is a stance adopted by social, corporate, or institutional culture that avoids using or buying already existing products. Oh, okay. So I had totally misinterpreted that. Interpreted that. Mm hmm. So what would be the phrase for then what I'm interpreting not invented here as for like the propensity to build on things or build them like take them into use, uh, continue. Don't repeat yourself, yeah. I've only really heard that mostly in the context of like, yeah, I guess one's internal work, don't repeat yourself. But when you're applying that to other people's work, I suppose the dry, the don't repeat yourself would also work. That's funny that not invented here is so closely associated with an anti-pattern. Hmm. Dog fooding. Yagni's a good one. Reinventing the wheel, yeah. Very cool. Yep, yeah, I don't know. Probably it's not as popular to. Again, that pervasive mentality is just to reinvent. All right. So this is looking okay. Uh, I need some text. Clearly, I've got a, some room for improvement. Let me know if I keep bumping the mic, if that's annoying. I'll just uh, try to adjust it one more time.
There we go. So let's do use some colored text and see what it looks like. What color should I use? It's information, call to action, or would this color detract if I were to color the buttons? Hmm. Let's just use a paragraph. Ooh, that just worked. What am I? Oh, it looks like editing regular HTML. Would you please log in or register to in order to subscribe. Bang, bang, boom. And I believe uh, I will I will float these right. There's a helper for that. Uh, sort of a text alignment, but Yeah, I don't want to write any CSS. I want to use just an existing class. And I don't know if float is the right way anyway. Just uses the margin classes. Float right. I didn't know if float was still in there. Here it is. In primary. Uh, they can both be the same color. Does it get on your nerves a little bit? How websites sort of give preferential treatment to new registering users and they'll put a big blue register button but then you have to kind of squint and search for the login button. ML auto or MR auto. Oh, I like those. Margin left auto or margin right auto. Uh, I mean, this is working though. And uh, float right does look well. So I would say ML auto, ML auto. Margin right auto. That didn't work. Save, but maybe I'm not hitting save. No, I am. Getting, my fingers are all tripped over themselves. So relogging is a rare instance. Oh wait, I think it's because session go use last for so long. What do you mean? Oh yeah, I think I'm, I could check my base template. Yeah, in any case, this is looking good. It's working. I have outline buttons, so it's not too eye-catching. So the thing is, then this would go to slash login. And next. Oops, wrong button. I'm hard coding this throughout here. This is a horrible, horrible practice, I know. And I think this um, redirect after registering thing I'll resolve later when I do the custom user model. 
we'll change the user model. Uh, in other words, adding specific field, defining a user model, because there's right now we're using the internal user model. Adding extra field. Then I can create a registration view and control the callbacks, control the functionality of that view, redirecting, uh, looking for the presence of this, this next method. I think this will work. Let me see if this works though. Count register next equals subscribe. So let's see. So maybe, well most, oh, okay, I got you. Sorry, I was uh, getting confused by your context. Most people use the same device to access sites. So they just have a persistent session and relogging is not very common. So maybe catering to the unregistered users is the right thing to do. I don't know. 150 characters. Blech. So, dog, my banking app's password is limited to 10 characters. Max. Oh, yeah. This is the default. <laughs> um, password security policy. Oops. So, I think there are... Those are defined... In the settings, base settings. This is a list of password policies, but in any case, I don't know where that is. What am I thinking? Is that something from Meteor or JS? I don't think so, though. Oh, here it is. Password validation minimum length. Common password, numeric password. Well, I don't know. I didn't, again, didn't define any of that. Just to the defaults. So you can use very secure. Oh, this is not for password. This is username. Any site built in the current year should accept at least 128 characters for the username. Yeah, I don't think there's a maximum. It only says minimum length validator. For, oops, let me close this up. I'm only, ah, man, come on. You're using the minimum length validator. Yeah, for the password. Let's see if there's a maximum length validator just out of curiosity. Copy paste. I thought I'd grab that comma. Ooh, boy, and that hard crashed it. Yeah. Doesn't have a maximum length validator. So, yeah, I guess it doesn't care. I wonder, though, in the database, how that field is defined. Curious. Curiouser and curiouser. Okay, back on track. Mm, 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 mm. It's a hash. So yeah, it doesn't matter how long it is, so it's consistent length. That makes sense. So what am I doing? See why this doesn't work. Yeah, so I can create this user sign up view. <laughs> well, that's not what I was trying to do. Sign up view, da 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 form, return render, sign up if it's valid, log in, and then redirect. Yeah, so I think that'll be about it. For this, um, for the register button on uh, the subscribe form, it'll just be a custom view. Boing. Should be, should be. 
Hmm. Yeah. Because here, if I go subscribe, these buttons will do it. This this would work. It would be fine. Everything would be good, fine and dandy. Uh, how is the oh to someone to the username? Yeah. How about not similar? One two three four. Not similar. That's a hard word to type. Registration successful. That's the problem. Is it's taking me to this page. Yep, again, I want to give a shout out to Simple is Better Than Complex. Vitor Frietas, really good. Always just consistently good. even using class-based view. A oh, class-based, no form, sorry. Yeah, form, okay, well that's. Yeah, so function-based view. Return redirect, okay. Well, I've got the recipe. So actually, I guess we could do that. Let me though, let me have some tea. I think we should commit this work so far. The new users having uh, to register here will leave them a little bit in the lurch. They'll be like, okay, I registered now, what do I do? Oh, wait. What was I doing? I was subscribing. Uh, now I can subscribe. So that's not ideal. I want to just to hop back right and uh, right in the flow so they don't really get too far out of context. <sighs> yes, I think this will be okay. If only, maybe I can open a sort of feature request. But in any case, I don't know where this accounts registers coming from Django or Wagtail. Let me just see. Uh, Wagtail accounts register. No, this is the one I looked at earlier. It could be there's some default functionality here. And again, I'll have to change these attributes. I think this has to come from uh, Wagtail because it's like fully styled and everything. It's all ready to roll. All right, so let's com commit this and then we'll move on and write our own view. Uh, subscription registration view. So I'll keep it right there in the subscription um, app.
it's, it's not quite a refactor. I would, basically, I moved subscription form to own template. Then and then create the login form. Okay, so which recipe did we like? So basically the same code Russia. By reverse Python or Vitor Freitas. So we create a form, user creation form. That's cool. If we if we want to do user profiles, hmm. But I don't really yet. Ah, uh, so we have to. This is interesting. You have to authenticate, log the user, and that's. Makes sense. I think we can handle this subscription. Forms.py. Our register form. To keep things consistent. I don't think I need to override these uh, fields. To my knowledge, I will just try. In fact, do I need to? To find this form, if I can just pass in the regular user creation form. Hmm. And what happens if I do a custom user model? It's all unknown to me. If I do a custom user model, I'll probably have to define these forms on my own. But let's try defining this without 
a custom form because I don't want to override these field values and we're really just passing in an unmodified instance of this. Let's leave this alone here. If I go to views.py, and we'll go um, subscription. So. Subscription register view. basically need all these except that middle one. I want my imports to be alphabetical. And a little bit more organized. All right. Good stuff. How are you doing over there, Quantum? Are you still hanging around or? Did you leave? Did your creation form? Let's see if this just works. work but okay hmm, I wish uh, Python had the um, the JavaScript approach of destructuring arguments maybe it does when the argument and the variable are the same Redirect, and now we will redirect to, oh, this is the tricky one. I guess it would just be a slash subscribe. Let me double check, uh, Django redirect. And in the future, just delete that. I'm going to have a site setting where you specify the login page. After you've created the page instance, you specify it, and then I can actually retrieve that from the settings and redirect to it. Boom, it would be cool. Redirect. I would like to just model view name or an absolute relative URL. Okay. Yeah, that's good, but hard coding it for now. Pulse 
form render. So I need a template with form and form. Okay. Now I need this subscription register. I'm back on simple is better than complex, but roughly the same deal. Just a little easier to see. Oh, did I get the login? I didn't get the login part. Where are the templates? Just realized that this isn't quite a login. This is more of like a uh, well, some kind of a notification or uh, login required. Sort of my decorator login required. So this will render in our main template. CSRF token, it'll render the form with generic markup. I will put bootstrap uh, material classes in there. Views because we're defined uh, your URLs because we've defined a view and we need to map it. Hmm. Which actually. can do this all in the subscribe page. No, because I have to subscribe or, well, well.
It's a little bit kludgy, but I could actually put a URL parameter in the subscribe page. Hmm. Like a get uh, parameter. Hmm. If we get that register. And it does all this. Hmm. Oh, well, let me thank you for a second. Let's look at the code. For the model. So yeah, when we're looking at the subscription index page, and I'm serving it up. Here I checked that if this is a post, if they're submitting the form. Prior to this, I could check. Maybe I would factor this out into a, into another method. Some of these things, uh, that's fine. Uh, so that this method doesn't grow too long. But what we're looking at here is super serve request. And even here in the get context, where I pass in the subscription create form, I could actually pass in the user form. It's a little bit, uh, might be a little bit hard to follow, but let me see if I can get this in here. So I'll pass in a form in every context. And if I look at the subscription index page, except the register, hmm. Oh man, I don't want this to be kludgy. Let's stick with this way. We're doing it uh, separately. I'll, I'll see if I can merge them back in. But I'll just try to explain real quick what I'm thinking. Uh, in, in this model, I can pass in any form. I can provide the uh, registration form. If the, I can get the context, the, the request. So let's just double check it here. There's a dictionary. Print this out and re-render that. There's nothing in the query dictionary, but uh, if I put, you know, um, This is truthy. This exists. So I could make my link. So instead of redirecting to account registry, it could be I could redirect to subscribes, you know, like that. Hmm. 
I'm afraid this is a little bit kludgy, but let me just let me give it a try. The goal here is sort of to keep people in the same context and the same flow. Uh, so it feels natural. I can do the same pattern with the login form. Yeah, this might work. Save it yet. Now I'm going to have a syntax error. And you just pass in the empty instance. So then I could say in the template, hmm. All right, so this registration button be updated really quick. To subscription. Or subscribe. This should be about the same. Yeah, cool. No need. Oh God, so many tabs open right now. I'm not using that. Figured this one out. Upvoted those ones. And I can take this. Actually, just render this. It's already there. Good. this view right now. Here we are. I, don't know. I need the subscription index. Here we go. So they will not be authenticated at this point. So I will prevent showing it from a, showing it to an authenticated user even if they've erroneously entered this. Uh, Uh, register thing. Yes, this will be an if else. Good. Nested. Conditional. Not caps lock, but tab. And if, hmm, then I suppose it would be the context will just be for registration form. Else. Display this. And we want to just copy this real quick and paste subscription. And since these are all namespaced, I'm going to break my code for a minute, but they're all in the subscription directory, so I don't need this prefixing. What's the guideline there? There's a clean code guideline about not adding unnecessary context or something like that. This one, I think. I need to add it at the page level. Rename. All right, so fix these here and then go back to the page model and uh, there's a parameter in the meta. I think it's just template, but let me double check.
page model. You're going to be explicit about the template. Cool, I might not need this view, it's a lot of extra code. This template looks nice. Ooh, that's a nice feature. Model, subscription index page. It's not in the meta. Just right there on the top level. Template equals. It's a little cleaner. All right, so now if we hop back over here, uh, no yellow text. Okay, so the login is gonna work normal. Oof. That's weird. Now I didn't mess with the login. Should be. There's the login view right there. Accounts login. Oh, okay. Good to go. Let's go to subscribe. Accounts login. That one's fine, and it'll work when I log in. Take us back to the subscription page, even though I've already got a subscription. Maybe it could say you are already subscribed. Now, if I register, okay. Uh, I need something truthy here. Apparently, the form is not truthy. Okay. Let me just close this view out, even though I might come back to it. now register figure it out in a second how to style it and, and everything so if they're not authenticated uh, yes so this is not rendering true so where's our model let's see this is not truthy Let's see if we're getting into here. Make sure the code's working up to that point. We do have register. And I'll just print this. So that's empty. It's an empty list. I wonder if Django's being too magical here. Because in the previous one, it's an empty list.
right, so now we're getting in there. Now it's rendering the form. to though include works some basic HTML or even just block Pass it to Crispy and import to Crispy. So if it's getting a form and the user's not authenticated, then hmm, how do I tell it? How do I ensure that this is the correct form? Take a step back over. So this is not going to work without something being passed there. Yeah, nothing. Register is not true. An empty list is not true. subscribe the login will work normally it takes us to log in next subscribe the register works and then I just need to fix get the crispy tag back there come on crispy I'll try that again um, bound widget has no actually feel just take the crispy out. How do we do these form as crispy field?
There, it's a little cleaner. Good. Oh, dang. And uh, actually, then Crispy's handling those for us. Very nice. This will be uh, done for us. Crispy to the rescue. Let's get a little bit of space for readability. And see if it breaks. Looking good. Uh, yep, and this would just be button. Button outline. Mm, let's just say success. Even though it's. Go forward, commence. Mary will want to edit this text. I will probably add that as a feature later. But in a way, we're making it happen. It's working. Let me grab a little bit of tea. Say so we got normal, the usual chai tea. Buka, vanilla chai, and this time I got the correct tea bag. And the second type is um, yogi tea, organic turmeric chai. Only with self-respect you can respect others. Okay, now I'm, I'm a yogi. All right, so our labels are working. My tea is ready, it's a little cold. Save there, and I want to save here. So now I don't need this view, but I could take parts of it, which I think I've already done. Now the deal here There'll be a couple of conditions here. So the normal one is if it's a post, we were assuming previously that it's creating a subscription, but now uh, this form will post on the same URL. Whoops. However, All right, so I'm in a different method here. I don't have any context from the previous method. But I believe this should still be available. Users registering. It's going to be a string. 
Hmm. Won't be truthy. Uh, well, let's just see. Strings are truthy, aren't they? Okay, so. I just wanted to print it though. Well, let me get to the bottom of this context and maybe we did receive it. Because now it's trying to process form data from the wrong form and so everything's breaking. So that's okay. It's true. There it is. All right. No problem. So then if user is registering, then handle the uh, registration form. If else handle subscription form a couple of functions should do it uh, first let me just compose, compose it on one big blob then I'll factor it out maybe let me just actually factor it out first a little bit preemptive but preemptive for readability purposes subscription form so if user is registering da 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 and I'll just hash this I think I'll still get the error mm, anyway so are strings truthy in Python I believe so Essentially this. Request post. And then the correct login. What do we need? Django login. Give an extra line for linting purposes. What is it complaining about? Breakpoint. I didn't actually put that there. Uh, 
Uh, it doesn't matter because I'm not using this view. Anyway. Oh. So I pasted them in the wrong file. Here we go. Contrib auth. Looks good. Oh man, I've got a lot of changes in this. And this one commit. Let's go back. Mm -hmm. So in this case, where <laughs> we're inside of a post, so I needed a way to distinguish that this is a um, that they're submitting the registration form. I could probably put a hidden field in there. Let me just take a look at the request, but really quick, I'll be right back. All right, hello, hello. So let's take a look at what we have inside the request post. There might be some kind of indicator. Uh, I don't have our debugger active. Not even sure if it's configured. Let me see. Okay, that looks good.
We should be able to inspect the request at this point if I put a breakpoint and start the debugger. The problem is I just need to stop this service from running and make sure the debugger uses the correct I don't know what this is. Okay, so the debugger's just not gonna work. I'll just go back to print debugging. I don't know what the heck that was. Get me away from this. Like, sort of worked, but didn't quite work. I just realized I do have to override the subscription form because we need a uh, we need an email. Dang it! All right, so it looks like we can just look for posts, uh, just straight from the form, so the post. Uh, I suppose it's there, post dictionary. So users registering. This should now behave in an expected way. The value will be added to the name, named property. Thank you, W3 Schools. I don't know, W3 Schools has got a lot of flack, but eh, I've had a pretty decent experience. Experience. All right, let's try it out again. I don't need to print anything, do I? So it's gonna get this post request. It's gonna check the post for requesting 
registering property from the form because the post data are the form fields basically. Dang. All right, hey, that's cool. So we did get the register is true, nice. Wait, 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 wait. Good grief. Yes. Let's see if we can just check those out. So we didn't get that in the post. Save this. I think it's the name though that should have the value in the post type name. Yeah, the name and ID match here, so okay. this there we are I didn't see it a moment ago all right now let's submit it so that might have been the problem I was hitting the back button yeah and it's not refreshing the form so now when I refresh the form the page clears out the data Oh, come on. Three. We'll come back and uh, customize the form again in a second to add the email. List object is no attribute get. Okay. <clears throat> How are we doing it down here? This is a dictionary, it's a query dict. Where am I, where's this error coming from? List at the object has no attribute get. Process registration form 257. Mm. So this could have updated since Django 2.0 or something. Ah. I 
I think we just want the clean data from both of those. Okay, so this is actually fine. That was not the problem. I was getting confused where that method was being called. So this clean to data should be a dictionary. Uh, change data might be a list. Let's find out. Each form in a class is responsible not only for validating data, but also cleaning it, normalizing it in a consistent format. It's a nice feature. Uh, you know what? The password might not be cleaned. It is a dictionary, but I don't know uh, if it's going to do anything to clean the password field. Let's go ahead and just try it out. I mean, somebody might want spaces in their password. So, let's see how this works. I didn't read the tutorial too closely. Yeah, that's the raw password. Yeah, that should be fine. The password should be there. Nice, the raw password. So I think I had pasted that from here. Clean data, clean data. No. All right, so let's go back. Didn't return an HTTP response object. Value error. Okay. Getting a little bit better. Got the right data. That's there. Now the question becomes First, is it getting into this method? Recent error. It is getting this error. <coughs> Excuse me, to this function body. valid basically the function looks the same returning a redirect should work inside of this Form's not valid. Uh, let me make sure I'm using the right form. The 
same form we're passing to the view. That I've added a new property to. Uh, All right, well, we'll just delete that property. Man, this is clued you, but okay. I can just use the pop here. There we go. So we have to basically, this is a really good answer. So I can remove it from the dictionary if it exists or return false. I guess this is sufficient and that doesn't kludge up the code or get it too messy. All right, what are we at? How, how long have we been? Just over two hours. So close to a stopping point. If I can just get this registration part worked out. Another time I can work on the form contents. I just want to make this work. So we'll go back, refresh the page. Test user three. And immutable. Oh, query dict is immutable, so you can't pop. just delete it in order I've gotten in here that value has to be there so we know it exists same query dict I can't mutate it do 
So what's a clean way of doing this? Uh, I know I'll be able to do it. And um, should I not pass in this hidden field into the request? Maybe that's. I pass as a get parameter. Oh man, I keep forgetting this basic stuff, but uh, action, yeah. Equals, there we go. So we want to just do. I don't know if you, so we have a Git dictionary in a post request. Let's find out. This is a little bit mysterious to me. One other with thing I can do is just make a copy of that. Then I can delete it. Then I need to put this back.
Register is still true though. Huh. Uh, so actually, I don't need this hidden field. If I just pay a little bit more attention. I'll save this. Let me double check. Yeah, the method is correct. So now we have just the form data. Internal server error. There we are, request post. This is where a debugger would come in handy. close to a solution here. Just a little bit of a mystery. Okay, I think I understand what's going on here. These returns, huh? They need to happen outside of these functions. Here, the serve needs to return this. Oh man, is this really the problem? Doesn't make sense. But let's find out. I guess this redirect is going to return the HTTP response, but it didn't ever get returned from serve. And so then this view or the uh, wagtail view can't really handle it. I could return, well, let me think here for a second. Yeah, let me do it this way.
quite an interesting caveat. It makes sense though. The thing is, this user should have been registered multiple times and perhaps wherever. Mm. Return to none instead. <laughs> okay. I just wonder if this is returning, it should be returning the value of the function after being called, but let's try this. Just move the code in context. I don't know how this would be different. I just don't have really much more battery left. I'm getting tired. <laughs> just want to relax for a little bit. I'm wondering if I've I'm encountering this problem because this user exists now. The serve function is not returning an HTTP request. What happens if I go back up here, log in, Riley, and check uh, our users? Wag to admin. Settings, users. Uh, we do have t test user three. here trying to combine these I'm gonna pull through I'm gonna do it so that worked well let's just double check yeah because it redirected us to the route The only other thing I could think is this form is never getting into the valid validation block, so it's not going to return anything. I might need to just define the form. Hmm. Find the form in the fields. Looks like my screen glitching out a little bit here. Let's see if this fixes it. All right. So essentially,
Let's see if I have a history buffer here. Cut a corner with this user creation form. So for whatever reason, it's not validating. Uh, I don't need to override any of the fields though. registration form in here. registration form. It's definitely working. Let's copy it. Come down to our view here. return here outside of here so it stops throwing these huge trace back back errors so and I need to move this circular reference thing out this user registration form needs to be imported here I think is the problem here because the registration form is importing for, uh, the file, the forms file is importing this model. Now I just feel like I'm getting pretty sloppy. We got test user three. Subscribe. So I register. Use registration form is not defined. Two thirty one. So here. And these 
are not in use. I'll just comment out code not in use so I have clarity. And I will clean it up. I'd like to move these back into those methods. Subscription create form. So I do need this import. So if user is registering. Process registration form will need this. Yeah. All right. And this needs to be a comma. This is why I wanted to wrap these in sub functions, but one step at a time. I right, just clean refresh register. We have to use test user four. Yeah, the form's working. Cool. the video froze. My video camera is getting tired even. <laughs> there it goes. All right, we are very, 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 very close. Returns an HTTP response redirect to the appropriate URL. And really, this is the same thing here that's redirecting me to 
the payment processor, so I don't see why. Why it would matter. Quick experiment. <laughs> hey, sometimes you just gotta guess things out. Oops. But if I if I log back in and I just redirect to some known text like uh, some known like magazine. So I'll log in. Create a subscription instance. And these don't matter so much. Yeah, now that works. So this flow certainly works. The form is not validating. So that's our that's the culprit. I mean, somewhere in that area of code. I think we're getting into this block. The user is registering. I'll double check that. Actually, let's print the value. Just to check it out. And there's probably something really obvious here, and I'm just too blurry eyed to see it. Good grief. All right, so now I'm logged in, so I'm just log out. Now we're seeing the proper form. Test user five. I should have checked if the user was logged in. I can. Now we should have something here. So if I highlight this, will it make it easier for me to find it later? Let's find out. None. Okay. Yes. Ah. There's yeah, something obvious. So the register is true. said none of this ever got executed. Okay. So that's none. Closer. Oh man, because that's where it is. It's in the Git dictionary. Come on, come on. Let's refresh it. So this is this yellow one. Five. Figure that out. That's a strange, strange thing. So the 
That's true. The user is go away. Thing. Why is that there? Dude. There we go. Thank you. So the form is valid. That's a good idea. Yeah, you yeah, see, you have the user when you save the form, so you don't need to call authenticate. All right, so this might just work without passing in the back end. So this is quite strange. This is why copy and pasting is so dangerous when you don't know what is going on in the code. And I just copy and pasted this whole block more or less. Uh, I read through it and it, it sort of makes sense, but I don't know the difference between logging and authenticate to be completely honest. Not too deep into Django internals. Ah, uh, yes, and we're already going to have the user object, so that was just not a necessary step. No need. Right, because the form. So this actually is not necessary. I like that, it's getting cleaner. And I believe I'm going to be able to move this thin into those uh, secondary functions one more time. server ran number did five complete
Thank you. We're logged in and everything. Man, this is nice. That's what I was hoping for. Keeps the uh, user right in context. So, boy. Then they just fill in the form. It's a multi step form, but there's no sense of having to move or navigate. It's just filling in the fields and being redirected to the current to the correct um, step. So we don't really have an overview. I suppose we could have an overview, which is also tricky. I don't want to do that. Not required. So the last thing is just to test if this will work. Well, let's just try processing subscriptions. See if it goes to the next form, so I don't have to log out. Does that work? Does seem to work. Cool. Let's just finish it. Alright, let's pour one on. And this will work as normal. Boing. Now if I log out and go to subscribe. We'll register, test user seven. It works. And I think this is now gonna work like normal. Okay, very good. Oof, figured that out. Took quite a lot of fiddling. Making some mistakes. Just part of the game. decent I think I can reset the views.py not using that in fact I don't need this file so I'll just delete that until we need it All right, 
let's describe our commits and then call it a night. What's this? Two and a half hours? Almost three hours. All right. It's almost midnight here. Yeah, rename the files. over. Very cool. Wow. Feels like an accomplishment. <laughs> that was a struggle. Boy, that could have been more smooth. Um, so, Yes, today we were able to create a unified subscription and registration form or login, whichever you need to do to ensure that users are logged in when they create a subscription. Uh, the next step is going to be to create a foreign key, foreign key relationship between subscription instances and the user account where they were created. Uh, that will give us a more... Uh, robust way to link uh, subscriptions to accounts even if the subscriber changes their email via their profile or, or for whatever reason um, but I will have to leave that to another day we're gonna be live coding tomorrow on the music app so we'll probably come back to the Western friend um, Tuesday I'm not exactly sure I don't have a strict schedule but it's been tending to be Tuesdays uh, and I meet next Wednesday with Mary to get feedback on the progress. So thank you very much for watching. Again, this has been a CodeBuddies.org live coding session. CodeBuddies is a really great community. There are a lot of people teaching and learning uh, together there. Lots of different hangouts available from many different um, skill sets. Whatever you're interested in learning or teaching, you can find the community for you there. Great. Well, thank you again for watching and have a great day.